So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please smash the like button on this video. So guys, in this next story, three members of a machete wielding balaclava wearing gang that lured a couple to North Yorkshire and robbed them at knife points have been jailed for a total of nearly 10 years. But the men who played the leading role in the crime in the quiet country lane late last year have yet to be punished. Deborah Smithies, the prosecutor, said the victims thought they were about to inspect a £26,500 truck that had been advertised for sale online. They followed directions from their home in Berkshire to Farnham Lane in Nairsborough on November the 2nd. The husband got out of their golf and looked around, but nobody was in sight. But then a transit van drew up and six to eight men in balaclavas jumped out. Miss Smithy said each was holding machetes and they were shouting, Where's the fucking money? Where's the money? The husband said they didn't have any money or any watches. They then shouted that they were going to kill them and again demanded to give them the money. One held a blade to the victim's throat. The couple were told to throw their phones to the ground, which they did. The wife was bundled out of the golf and the gang drove off with the golf and the transit van. The husband had intended to pay most of the truck's price by a bank transfer, but had bought nearly £7,000 in cash, which was in the golf. Two of the gang were arrested shortly afterwards and a third, Ben Alexander Stevenson, later. So sentencing, Jack Duke and Ben Stevenson, the recorder of York, Judge Sean Morris said, It is with great regret that the people I consider must have had the leading role in this enterprise and not in the dock. That is often the way when serious crime is committed. He jailed Duke of Leeds for 38 months plus 9 months for other offences he had committed in Leeds prior to the robbery and Stevenson of two years and nine months. He had earlier sentenced Callum Peterson, who's 23, formerly of Bradford, to three years and 11 months, and all three pleaded guilt to robbery and carrying a machete on the basis they were not the main men. Duke was on a community order passed three months before the actual crime. So for Duke, the defence said that he had fallen in with the wrong crowd because he had been isolated socially. He had been severely injured when he slid under a bus when he was 11 years old and spent four months in hospital and he's still suffering the after effects. The defence of Stevenson said it's beggars believe that he had gotten himself involved in a serious crime. And Stevenson's barrister said he regretted it very much. He said unlike the other two who had been arrested shortly after the robbery, he had been arrested later and identified by a fingerprint on a machete. He had worked in the salvage business and in farming. So guys, this is a new story coming from North Yorkshire ways. So guys, in this next news story, a skydiver who murdered his girlfriend after she confronted him about the suspected, the word that begins with R of a teenage girl at work, has been jailed for life. Ashley Kemp was jailed for a minimum of 19 years by a judge who told him he had shown nothing but self-pity to the end. The 55-year-old was handed a life sentence for the murder of mother of three, Claire Armstrong, who was also a skydiving instructor and owned a beauty salon. Kemp, a skydiving instructor and pilot, placed his hands around Ms Armstrong's neck for what seemed like an eternity, so no one else could have her, it was heard. Judge John Thackeray Casey said the relationship was ending and Kemper decided if you could not have her, nobody could. The court heard how a teenager had made allegations against the defendant, which had led to him losing his job and put a huge strain on the couple's relationship. Sentencing him, at Hull Crown Court, Judge Thackeray said the circumstance of the attack at Ms Armstrong's home in North Lincolnshire were devastating, tragic and brutal. He showed no emotion as the sentence was passed at Hull Crown Court as members of victim Ms Armstrong's family cried in the public gallery. Earlier, Ms Armstrong's brother-in-law said in a victim impact statement on the 6th of November 2022, our lives changed forever. We received the news which has shattered us all and left a huge hole in our lives that can never be filled. Claire, our beautiful sister and mum, was tragically taken from us in such horrific circumstances that we will never accept or understand. We miss her incredibly, and regardless of what the person responsible for killing Claire received as a punishment, it will never be enough to ease our pain for losing her. That day we lost Claire, which was the day that our lives changed forever. Recalling how Ms Armstrong was murdered in her own home, he continued, it was a place where she should have felt safe. But ultimately, it was where her safety was stolen from her by him. He continued, it is unbearable to comprehend. Her youngest son, who is 14 and needs her most, 
and has had his mum ripped apart from him. Life, since that horrible moment in November, we cannot remember a day in which we did not cry. We cannot remember a day when we laughed. So Kemp admitted manslaughter, but denied murder, leading to a six-day trial at Grimsby Crown Court, which ended with a guilty verdict last week. So in passing sentence, Judge John Thackeray Casey said he was satisfied that Kemp strangled Ms Armstrong so no one else could have her after she ordered him to pack his bags and leave her home. The couple had been dating for more than two years and had discussed marriage before Kemp was arrested at Leeds Bradford Airport last August as they returned from holiday in Portugal. Kemp was accused of attempting to the word that begins with R, a teenage girl, at the drop zone skydiving centre he was managing near Lincoln. Ms Armstrong worked as a skydiving instructor at Drop Zone and also ran a beauty salon in her village in Messingham. Judge Kemp said, you committed the offence in the home of Clara Place where she was entitled to feel safe and secure. A great deal has been said in court. I emphasise wholly properly about the devastating, tragic and brutal circumstances of the death of Claire Armstrong. Her untimely death coupled inevitably with the impact of what occurred on her family and those who were close to her are a critical consideration. No sentence I impose can give the sons of Claire their mother back. No sentence I impose can undo what you, Kemp, have done. All I can do is impose what the law considers to be the appropriate sentence for a case of this nature. I take into account the victim personal impact statements, which describes better than I ever could the devastation that you have caused. It is perhaps impossible to put into words how they feel, but perhaps the statement which has been read out on behalf of the family gives some indication of the devastation you have caused. He said, Ms Armstrong had so much to live for and adding, she was obviously an impressive woman with her own business whilst also working as a skydiving instructor. She was a much-loved mother. The judge went on to say, you decided that if you could not have her, nobody could and you launched a brutal attack on her. Firstly, you struck her twice to the head, breaking her nose and causing injury to her forehead. You then pinned her down and strangled her with such force that you broke a bone and the thyroid cartilage. Injuries to her mouth indicated that she also smothered her mouth, no doubt to prevent her from screaming from help. She was undoubtedly fighting for her life, evidenced by the injuries caused by your forehead and the fact that she had bitten her tongue. I reject your account that she was attacking you. He said, I have no hesitation concluded, so that I am sure that you intended to kill, although I accept it was a briefly held intention. He also noted that Kemp had lied about the time of the murder. Kemp claimed, his 999 call in the early hours of Sunday, November the 6th, 2022, he had killed Ms Armstrong only two hours earlier. But the prosecution claimed she had died much earlier, possibly early on the Saturday morning when she stopped responding to WhatsApp messages from her pals at the skydiving place. The judge said Kemp had been caught on CCTV in the early hours of Saturday morning with clear injuries to his face. The trial also heard that while Ms Armstrong was lying dead in bed in a dressing gown wrapped in a duvet, Kemp let the dogs out three times and wrote a suicide note. So the judge, as I said, jailed him for 19 years. I just want to say rest in peace, Ms. Armstrong, and my condolences go out to your family. It's your boy GZ. Keep it locked, keep it real.